yet another Technical Tuesday episode. In this week's episode, we are looking at the LCD engine hour meter on a Yanmar Model B panel. Now, it is common that these fail after a few years, and so you are no longer able to accurately log your engine hours. Now, there's a few fixes for this. One is to completely get a new panel. However, that is a really expensive part, and it also resets the engine hours. Another thing is to put a separate engine hour monitor somewhere else on the boat. However, we have found that a $30 part ordered from the internet is a direct replacement for the LCD engine hour meter on this boat. So today we're going to strip it all down, put it back together and hope we will have a working engine panel. Now this is a bit of a fiddly job and for this you are going to need some tools. The first thing you're going to need is you actually going to need the replacement LCD panel. It is about $30. You can buy it from this source up on the internet. This is a European supplier. There should be a supplier elsewhere in your region. However, contact them if you have no joy. The second thing you're gonna need is a set of Torx screwdrivers. For those that don't know, they are the little five pointed star shaped bits and you will need those to access parts of this engine panel. The third thing you are going to need is a set of craft knives. Now you can buy these in Walmart very very sharp pointed blades and that will become apparent later on in the video when you need these so probably a ten dollar set of craft knives and the final thing that you're gonna need and honestly I know that I used to be a dentist but these things are so important when you're doing fiddly boat jobs get yourself a set of dental tools like a mirror a probe and a set of long nose tweezers you can get these on Amazon you can get them on eBay but for doing small fiddly jobs, they are invaluable. And I know that I'm gonna use these a lot today. Now access to the back of the engine panel is relatively straightforward. Four Phillips screws hold the panel in place. Be careful with this, there is a rubber gasket and if it has been in place for a while, you can accidentally tear the gasket. So gently remove the engine panel. The rev counter, which contains the LCD engine hours, is held in place by four Torx screws. Remove these, put them somewhere safe. I always put them in a glass and then remove the wiring loom gently by pulling it from the back of the rev counter. This should come away pretty simply. And once you've done that, you will be left with your engine hour meter with the broken LCD hours meter. Now I cannot emphasize enough that this job needs to be done inside on a flat surface. There are three Torx screws which hold the whole unit together. Again, with your Torx screwdriver, simply remove those three screws and keep them somewhere safe. Now the unit will still all be held together by mechanical friction, so a little bit of downward pressure from a blunt object like a Phillips screwdriver through the back of the unit should allow it all to pop out onto your work surface. There we go. With the plastic lens cover and the bezel somewhere safe, we are left with the inner workings of your engine hour meter and your rev counter. Now, this is a pretty delicate piece of machinery, so you are going to be have to be pretty careful as you handle it. With the electronics exposed, we now need to remove the old LCD panel and the ribbon connector. Now, on the Yanmar panel, there are blobs which are insulating putty that look like old chewing gum. This is where your craft knife comes in super handy. You have got to very, very carefully remove all the excess insulation putty. So using a very sharp tip knife and taking obvious care with fingers, we slice the way at all the putty. Now be aware you don't need to be overly cautious with the ribbon connector as you are going to be replacing the unit it's in its entirety. On this panel, we found that the insulating putty had to be removed from two places. Blob number one, which is where the ribbon connector connected to the circuit board. That was quite a lot of work and you do have to be careful of the components underneath, especially the adapter that goes into the circuit board. And area two is the insulating putty where the ribbon connector passes through to the front of the LCD panel. Now, overall, removing the old insulating putty from the circuit board took about 60 minutes. I cannot tell you how careful you have to be. And yes, I did chop through the old ribbon connector. It was pretty worn and it kind of fell apart in my hands. But again, I have to emphasize, you've got to be super careful and super slow in getting everything cleaned up. 
Once most of the putty had been removed from the circuit board, it was pretty easy to pull the male connector from the female connector on the circuit board. This releases the whole ribbon connector and allows you to continue cleaning the area up. Now, this close-up should show you what you are left with. Star number one shows you the circuit board with the female part of the adapter for the ribbon connector. This should be very carefully cleaned to remove all excess putty. Star two is the male part of the ribbon connector. Now, the white plastic plug is not connected to the ribbon itself, so you should gently remove this from the ribbon connector and put it to one side once you have cleared all the excess putty from it. You will need this later. Its function is simply to hold the ribbon connector onto the circuit board once you have connected the new part. So it attaches by finger pressure. It's pretty easy to unclip and to clip back in, but be aware, try not to damage this part. It is super important to make sure that this all works at the end of the day. Now, the next step is to access the old LCD panel. To do this, you need to lift the printed face of the rev counter away from the body of the instrument. This is done using the tip of a craft knife. You do not need to remove the face completely. Just lift it sufficiently to gain access to the old LCD engine hour meter. Removing the old LCD engine hour meter was pretty straightforward. It is held in place by contact adhesive, but there is a little gap at the back of the instrument panel where you can actually use a small, fine instrument, in this case, a dental probe, to push through and by applying some pressure through the panel onto the back of the LCD engine hour meter, you can push it out and remove it. Once complete, we can offer up the old panel to the new one to make sure they are the same size. We can then spend some time making sure that there is no excess putty anywhere in the mechanism that will hamper our ability to put the new LCD panel back in. So with everything clean and ready to accept the new LCD engine hour meter, we need to push the new one back into place. The ribbon connector is pretty new and so needs to be carefully pushed through the slot that allows it to be connected to the circuit board. In this case, my more than capable assistant held the engine hour meter while we gently and very gently bent using a pair of tweezers the ribbon connector through the slot. Once the end of the ribbon connector had been pushed through the slot to take it to the circuit board, we were able to relocate the new LCD engine hour meter in the position that the previous engine hour meter occupied. It was pushed firmly into place using finger pressure and there was enough contact adhesive left on the unit to not require any more adhesive to be used. Similarly, the printed dial from the rev counter still had contact adhesive on it and so we just simply were able to push this back down to relocate it if however you find that you need a little bit more contact adhesive you can simply get this and apply it using a q-tip the new lcd panel in place we are left with the ribbon connector which now needs to be connected to the printed circuit board now the connector needs to be pushed into place on the circuit board and that is held in place with that little white male plug that we kept from when we disassembled it now attaching the ribbon connector to the printed circuit board involves utilizing that small white male plastic connector that we removed during the disassembly of the unit the easiest way we found to do this was to push the ribbon connector onto the circuit board, make sure that everything lined up and that the contacts were in place with the circuit board. And once we had that in place using some light finger pressure, maintaining its position, we then took the small male white plastic connector and all this does is simply holds everything in place. That clicks in, and once you've done that, you have a secure ribbon connector against the circuit board, as you can see here. From here on in, we need to reassemble the unit, put the guts of the dial and the instrument back into its case. They have to align in a certain way, but it should all become pretty apparent. Then apply the bezel, the lens, and the retaining screws at the back should be pushed in place and everything is secure. And once this is done, it is simply a question of taking the dial, reinserting it into the engine panel and making sure that everything works correctly. So now that's all fitted, let's have a look and see if we've got our engine hours back. So I'm pretty pleased with that, a $30 part 
rather than replacing a whole $800 engine panel. In addition to that, I've managed to preserve the engine hours because the chip is still the original chip that holds the data. I also, as you may have noticed, while I was taking the engine panel apart, replaced the decal sticker on the front of the engine panel. This is a $50 part, but again, the UV gets to it, and I will put a link to that decal there. Again, that is a really simple, that was a two minute job. Just take the old chipped panel off and put a new decal on. So all good there. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed that Technical Tuesday. We obviously will be back with more Technical Tuesdays, covering a whole variety of different topics relating to boating, sailing, and all all different aspects of the life that we lead so if you haven't already done so feel free to subscribe click down there and also click the notification bell so you don't miss any more episodes hope you enjoyed that goodbye